dive into the living waters of the Word of God on So Says the Lord with Sherry Hales Ministries, where we're learning, living, loving. Now here's your host, Bible teacher, minister, author, Sherry Hales. Well, welcome. Peace, love, and joy to you and your family. I'm so happy you decided to join me today on So Says the Lord with Sherry House Ministries, where we're learning, living, and loving. So let's dive right into the refreshing living waters of the Word of God. So we here at Sherry House Ministries have been doing a three-part ministry series entitled The God Series. We are looking at God in three separate segments, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We recently wrapped up the God the Father segment, and now we are looking at God the Son, focusing on titles of Christ found in the Bible. Right now, we will look at the head of the church. So this title for Christ informs us that he is the ruler of the church. As the ruler of the church, Christ rules or keeps the church straight or on track. He does this through his written word through his lordship and also through the fivefold ministry which is the apostle the prophet the evangelist the pastor and the teacher and so the series focus scripture for this entire series all three segments is found in 1st John 5 7 to 8 for there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. The series four thoughts. What do we want to gain as a result of this series? So God is a triune being, Father, Son, Spirit. He made us in his image and likeness, body, soul, and spirit. As we learn about the triune nature of God, we will also learn about the triune nature of man. And in doing so, we will gain a more effective and fulfilling walk of faith. The scripture that I will be looking at for this title, Head of the Church, is Colossians 1, 15 to 20. If you want to follow along, you can grab your Bible now. I will be looking at the King James Version of the Bible, but whatever version you have is fine. Now, if you want to also dive a little deeper into the Word of God, Join us for Bible study. You would also read Ephesians 1, 15 to 23. Visit my website, www.sherryhealthministries.org. There you will find information about how to participate in the Bible study. And while you're there, if this ministry is being a blessing to you, feel free to sow a seed and help us advance the Word of God. So now I'm just going to give the overview for head of the church, head of the church. So the Bible tells us that Christ is the head of the church. As the head of the church, he is the visionary and the body, which is the church believers. The body, we are the ones that will carry out the mission. There are multiple scriptures that tell us the vision of Christ for the body. John 10.10 10 is one of them. Where it tells us, where it says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now, when Christ returned to heaven to be seated at the right hand of God the Father, he equipped the church with tools so that his mission might be carried out. John 14, 16 tells us, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. This comforter is the Holy Ghost the third person of the Trinity. And he does more than just comfort us. 
He helps us. He teaches us, empowers us, reveals the word of God to us, gives us wisdom, and there's much more that he does as well. So in addition to sending the Holy Ghost to empower the body to fulfill his mission, Ephesians 4, 11 to 12 tells us, and this is what I already said when I, when I actually said, um, gave information about the head of the church. I already actually said this, but Ephesians 4, 11 to 12 tells us, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And so I want to go ahead and look at uh, the scripture now. It's Again, it's Colossians 1, 15 to 20. Colossians 1, 15 to 20. I hope you have your Bible by now. Let's see. And so... Colossians 1 15 it says who is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature so this is talking about Christ this is giving us information about him it is telling us that Christ is the image of the invisible God. Think about an image. Think about an image. Think about looking in the mirror or anything that is reflective and you will see an image. Christ is the image of the invisible God. So in other words, when he was on earth walking as a man, those that interacted with him and were blessed to be on earth at that time where they actually saw him in the flesh, when they saw him, it was like seeing the image of the invisible God. Then the script, then this verse Colossians 1.15 goes on to say that he is the firstborn of every creature. The firstborn of every creature. So this, this is a very interesting um, this is a very interesting statement that he is the firstborn of every creature. So he, Christ created everything. It tells us that the world was created by the Word. And there are scriptures that tell us that the Word is actually Christ. And so this is telling us that He is also the firstborn of every creature. And so when we are reading the Bible, some some of the Bible is very easy to understand. It's, it's very clear. But other scriptures, there is, um, it, they are, the meaning behind it is still, it has to be um, given by revelation. And so some of these things in the Bible, although a lot of it has been revealed, not everything is, is clearly revealed um, so that we can fully understand exactly what it means. And, I, and when I'm looking at this, this is one of those, um, those scriptures because it says the firstborn of every creature. But also when you are reading the Bible and you get to a passage where it is difficult to understand. The scripture itself will help you to understand what it means. And so that's how Revelation 
happens as well. It is through sometimes God will give you a revelation as you're reading um, something and as you are meditating on it. And all of a sudden, your eyes of understanding will become enlightened and God will begin to show you what he meant. And also, he shows us through different scriptures in the Bible and other scriptures will help us to understand um, uh, various scriptures in the Bible. So the scriptures interpret themselves as well. Verse 16 says, for by him, this is further explaining, this is connected to verse 15 because it's now saying for by him. So this is explaining something. And that's what I was just saying. The scripture explains itself. For by him were all things created. He's telling us this. Jesus, the head of the church. He is not only the head of the church, but he is the creator of everything. This is telling us for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So this is letting us know. So as I, as I said earlier, as we are reading, um, as we are learning about the trial nature of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, we'll also learn about the triune nature of man, body, soul, and spirit. This is telling us here, all things were created by him and for him. So there are theories about where man came from, how we got here. But we as Christians, the Bible is our authority. This is telling us where we came from. God created us. And the reason he created us was for himself. And so that further lets us know. He did not just create us to, to just um, exist in this life and, and decide how we are going to move about in this life because he actually created us for a purpose and so that means that he he created us with a plan in mind and so he has a plan and a purpose for every person that speaks to that speaks to the fact that we are all valuable we all have value sometimes in life people start feeling for whatever reason that they are not valuable um, or they are treated like they're not valuable. But that simply is not true. The one that made us, made us specifically for a purpose, for a reason, he had, he values us. We are his creation created by God. And so we are valuable. And so, as a child of God, know that you are valuable, very precious in the sight of God. Verse 17 says, And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. So this is, this is letting us know further. He is before all things. In other words, the reason that a thing is, is because of Christ. Because Christ caused it to exist. Christ is the reason that we exist. Christ is, the, is what is holding us together. He's holding not only us together, but he's holding all things together. He's holding all things together, making things, the, the world to continue to, to work, um, causing the, you know, the flowers and the plants and the trees to, to grow. And 
everything that happens, all of the cycles that go on, the one that's holding those things together is Christ, who is also the head of the church. Verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the head. Who is the beginning? The firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So Christ is the head. If we are Christians, then Christ is the head. Therefore, the things that we think about, the things that we do, the things that our mind tells us to do, should be things that are within the mind of Christ. And the Bible talks about that as well, the mind of Christ. And so he is our head. He is the one that we allow to, to teach us. He's the one that we allow to um, shape our thoughts and our belief system. And, and, you know, the word is the word. The word was sealed from the beginning. God, the Bible tells us he is the Alpha and Omega. When he made this world, he knew everything that would ever happen in the world. He knew everything um, all of the different generations. He knew every person. This is telling us that he is the reason that these things exist. And so nothing surprises him. And there is nothing that he did not consider when the word was sealed. So society or the world can never get so advanced where the Bible is now irrelevant or where um, you know, it doesn't matter anymore because people have come to this place of enlightenment, I guess, where they see things in a way where the Bible is archaic. That's not the case with the Bible. It couldn't be because Jesus is the first and the last. Everything he made and everything, it says he was before everything. The Bible tells us he's the Alpha, God is the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the ending. And so when the Bible was sealed and approved, everything that would ever happen in any generation of humanity was already considered and accounted for. There's nothing we can do as people to surprise God. We can never become so advanced where the Bible is now irrelevant. And I know some people sometimes feel that because they have maybe listened to messages or heard things that leave a bad taste in their mouth. And they've heard something and they think, well, this can't be right. You know, it is possible that it's not right. It is possible that you are listening to a person that has that is saying something about the Bible that is not valid. That's why it's important to read the Bible for yourself and to rightly interpret it. To read it without coming to it um, as if you have something to teach the Bible, but to read it as if the Bible is going to teach you. You are letting the Bible teach you. As, as a Christian, you are learning from the Bible. You're not taking what you've heard in the world and different opinions and um, trying to apply that reasoning and logic to the Bible. You are letting the Bible, which is the truth, the true word, you're letting that um, direct you. You're letting the word be your compass. You're letting the word be your light. You're letting the word be your truth. And then um, it says, it says, I'm going to read 18 again. And he is the head of the body, the church. And that is our title, the head of the church. Christ is the head of the church. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. So the firstborn from the dead. So in Christ, we, we, we are born again as children of God. But there is going to come a day when Christ returns where not only will we be spiritually born again, 
but our body is actually going to be changed so that we can live in a body forevermore. And so we are going to have a new life as well with our body. Our bodies will be changed um, so that it's no longer corruptible, can no longer die, um, can no longer experience sickness or sadness or any of those things. But it happened to Christ first when he was resurrected from the dead. He is the first in all things. And so it says, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. All fullness dwells in Christ. And so another part of why he came was to fulfill all of the requirements of the law. All of the things that Adam lost when he um, gave everything over to the enemy. So what Adam did, when Adam, when Adam decided to sin, he actually severed the headship. He severed the headship that he had, that mankind had with God. And that's why Christ had to come back. When he severed the headship, it actually allowed the enemy to be the head of mankind. And that is why we are born into a sinful nature. If we are not born again, we are still under the headship of the enemy. Because that is what Adam did. When Adam sinned, he severed the headship that he had with God. And it gave everything over to the enemy, allowing him to be the head of human kind of humanity that's why the word says that we must be born again because when we are born naturally we are all born into a world where the bible says satan is the prince of this world and so we are born under that headship unless we sever it by becoming born again and then christ will again become our head and so it says, For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. So he took the headship back. He fulfilled every um, requirement of the law uh, of Moses. So that is why um, the church is not under the law. The church is under grace. Verse uh, 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. Excuse me. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. So this is telling us there was a there was enmity between God and man. What Adam did was separated man from God, from the headship of God. But Christ, what he did, it says, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, the only thing that can wipe away the stain of sin for, for mankind permanently, the only thing that could do it was the blood of Christ. And it says, And having made peace through the blood of, blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And so, this is revealing to us that there's going to come a time when everything that God initially intended, when he made mankind, when, when he made everything, um, what Genesis tells us, all of the things that God made, and there are things in heaven that he made. All of that, everything, is going to be reconciled to God. So what Jesus did, he did a portion of it. He, he made a way so that mankind can be right with God again. So that we will have eternal life, if only we accept God. If only we accept Christ. 
That is the only way we can have eternal life is if we accept Christ. And so Christ has finished that work, but, th but there is more work to be done. And so there are other stages. Christ is coming back. And he also says, he, because our body hasn't been redeemed yet, our spirit man has if we accept Christ, but he's going to also make our body so that it's like Christ wanted it to be. God wanted it to be in the first place. And the Bible further speaks and tells us that there will come a time when there will be a new heaven and a new earth as well. And so when everything is made new, in other words, born again, everything must be born again. Everything that Adam lost when he severed the headship of God in the beginning and allowed Satan to be the head. There's going to come a day when Christ makes everything right. Everything will be born again, not just our spirit, but everything, our body and all of the creation, things in heaven and things on earth. Well, I do hope that you have enjoyed today's um, Bible teaching about the Son of God or God the Son, where we looked at the title, Head of the Church. And I pray that your body, soul, and spirit has been refreshed in the Lord. May the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace. Until the next time, be blessed and walk with God.